Hello guys. Can you guys come a little forward because I have to fight this noise in the background? And I assure you that I don't eat animals, so I'm not gonna bite you. Um, how do you know someone is vegan? What a terrible joke, right? That's one way people who exploit animals want us to shut up. But the reality is people eat animals all the time and they talk about it all the time. Before I start, I want to thank the organizers and especially Jamie. Without her, without her, we won't be here, period. So yeah, I'm Dr. Harsini. I'm a founder of uh, Allied Scholars for Animal Protection and I literally dedicated the rest of my life to train the future generation of thought leaders who take veganism and animal rights seriously and dedicate their entire lives to it, their entire careers. And we don't wanna do any of the humanely raised, grass-fed, uh, cage-free, uh, welfare is reduction, none of that half as bullshit. We're just gonna take veganism seriously. So tomorrow, June 3rd, is my 12th year vegan anniversary. So I've been vegan for 12 years, still waiting on dying from protein deficiency. But I actually changed my birthday, real biological birthday, to June 3rd, because that's another opportunity that I get to talk about animal rights. On Facebook, people message me, you know, all these lame messages that you get, oh, happy birthday. I say, Thank you so much. Are you vegan? Because this is my vegan anniversary. And I make them regret telling me happy birthday. But really, veganism is the best thing I've ever done in my life. And my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner. I want to say how much I respect you all because you could be doing anything else with your life and you decided to be here and fight for animals. I used to do cancer research, I used to do human rights activism, and every time I said cancer research, and people, people loved it, they respect you. When you say human rights activism, people respect you. The only form of social justice that is not about us and it's about an, animals of other species is the animal rights movement. It's the only one that you don't get social approval for fighting for the victims, which is why it's so important for us to speak up and be louder than this generator and people who exploit animals. I also want to say that I am an introvert. The last thing I want to do is to do outreach or be in front of people and do public presentation. Every time I do that, a part of me dies. But I do it nevertheless because it's not about us. This movement is not about us. It's about animals of other species. We shouldn't be doing things that make us feel better. We should be doing what needs to be done and we should say what needs to be said. And other people are not saying it. To make us a little more effective, I have three things I wanna to talk to you about today. One is, there is a saying that we are the average of five people around us. Those are your best friends, those are your family members and your partners. It's really important. If these people are activists, if they are vegan, they will empower you and they make you a better activist. If these people are animal uh, abusers, if they, if they are not vegan, they will lower your values. They will take you down. I see that all the time. When vegans in colleges, they hang out with a lot of non-vegans, they lose their voice. Sometimes they, don't, they, sh they feel so shy to even say to their friends that they're vegan. I see that all the time when people start dating non-vegans. They lose the courage to speak up for the animals. Sometimes we put our own petty pleasures, such as our desire to not be lonely or have sex, above what's right to do for the animals. And if your partners, on the other hand, is vegan and is an activist, they will make you a better activist. To be very clear, I don't say don't date non-vegans. I don't say don't talk to them. Do it. Get them active. Get them vegan. Give them a chance. Everybody gets a chance. A hunter, an animal farmer gets a chance. But at the end of the day, they either align, your action, align their actions with their values or not. We would never compromise for any other form of injustice. I would never date someone. Imagine if I was a Black Lives Black Life, uh, Matter activist and my partner was racist. It just doesn't make sense. We will never compromise. It's only when it comes to animal rights that even us vegans and activists sometimes compromise. 
So keep that in mind. Whatever you do, don't compromise. The second thing I want to say is that maybe, maybe this is your sign to quit your job. We have 20, 30, 40 years left, something like that. Every second matters and every second thousands of animals are dying after a horrible uh, treatment in uh, animal farms. We don't have a lot of time. We don't have time to waste on working in bank and insurance companies and things that really don't make a difference for the world. If your job is making you unhappy, if it's not making the impact that you want to see in the world, if, you know, I don't say, sometimes you make a lot of money and you get, don you get to donate. That makes sense. But if it's making you miserable and you can do something more productive with your life, guys, we don't have time. And to be clear, I don't say that everyone should work for animal rights organizations and nonprofits. There are so many other works and jobs that are related to animal rights. You can make an impact, big impact for animals. Some, sometimes it's like working even for the government, right? But think about quitting your job. Maybe this is your, uh, this is your sign. The third thing I want to talk to you about is that we need to speak up. I'm, I'm going to give you a few examples. Just a few months ago, there was a study that came out of Harvard and Tufts University. It said that women who eat more protein, uh, plant-based proteins, age healthier and they have fewer chronic diseases. It was a very strong and large study. How do you think media reported this? They said, warning vegans, you need meat to be healthy. This was 100% against what the conclusion of the paper was. There is a war against veganism. You may re resonate with this. When you go to work, your colleagues are not shying away about having barbecue last night. They don't shy away to talk about hunting. They don't shy away to talk about their fishing. Think about fishing. People enjoy it. They walk around, you, you walk around, you see all these people dragging these animals out of water and suffocating them to death for pleasure. And somehow this is normalized in our society. They don't shy away to talk about this stuff. Every TV advertisement has animal exploitation in it. I was at the gym, my fucking treadmill was showing me animal exploitation. The, the, the TV, the screen on the treadmill had animal exploitation in it. Uh, Non-vegans, they don't shy away from speaking up. We need to be louder. We need to use every goddamn opportunity to speak up. There is no other form of social justice that advance because people shy away. And the last thing I want to bitch about, the last thing I want to complain about is cupcake vegans. Have you heard that? You see all these vegan pages with thousands of vegans who never want to speak up? Yeah, I'm talking about them. I call them cupcake vegans because they like to bake cupcakes and take it to parties and they want to make an impact like that. Don't take me wrong. Giving non-vegans good vegan food is good to, to show them that you can be health, you know, healthy and eat tasty food. But you can't win a goddamn movement by cupcakes. And these people always tell you, yeah, I just want to, uh, you know, play, just, just be a good role model, you know. I don't want to push my beliefs on other people. You do you, man. We would never do that for any other social issue. We would never say, I'm not going to. Think about it. If somebody was killing a dog in front of you, you would take action. You're not going to worry about other people calling you judgmental. One of the biggest problems I see with animal rights movement is that vegans are so worried about being called judgmental and pushy. Well, go to a slaughterhouse and then we talk about who's, being, who's pushing their ideas on other animals. There is nothing wrong with judgment. We just have to judge righteously. If someone was raping someone else, if someone was beating a dog or a child, we will take action. We are not going to say, I'm not going to judge you. You do you, right? Of course we judge. We shouldn't judge people for things they don't have the control over, such as the way they look, the you know, things that they, they don't decide. 
But on their actions, absolutely, we should judge people and we need to take action. Animal oppression is the worst form of oppression, period. Statistically, logically, rationally, mathematically, ethically, morally, there is nothing that causes so much suffering as much as animal uh, oppression. And there is no other cause that we can dedicate our entire life and every goddamn second to it. Animals cannot afford to have us not at our 100%. They cannot afford us to dilute the animal rights ma mission with other causes. This is a mission for animal rights. So let's not shut up. We need to speak up. We need to use every opportunity, our careers, our donations, whatever we can do. But please, let's not shut up until every goddamn cage is empty and every animal is liberated. Thank you.